much, uh, Mr. Chair, and for your courtesy, uh, Ranking Member Blumenthal. Uh, thank all of you for being here. To all of the witnesses, I am so profoundly grateful for your leadership and your courage in revisiting some of the most painful moments of your life, all in order to help prevent others from enduring what you guys have endured. You are world-class athletes, your heroes and your survivors, and your bravery here today to share your stories deserves our gratitude and respect to be sure, but I just also want you to know what a change you are making for future generations of athletes as well as current athletes, and what a great example uh, your standing up and speaking out is giving to so many other people who are going to also need to muster bravery and courage in their lives uh, for one reason or the next. Um, I just thought maybe each of you could take a minute to address two questions I have, which will likely take the rest of the time I have for, for questions. Given your experiences, I'd like to hear if you can identify this, who you believe to be most responsible for allowing these abuses to continue, and also what cultural factors in your training fostered an atmosphere in which these abuses could begin and continue for so long. And maybe, Mr. Maurizi, I could start with you. Who would I, who would I hold accountable? Who do you think is the most? I mean, I, I two two answers come to my to my mind. First, first and foremost, when I, when I decided to uh, file a grievance, I my I, I hired an attorney, and my to, to guide me through this. My attorney's first advice was to contact the local authorities yep. and to report a, a crime. the The statute of limitations had run way past by the time I. Uh, reported the crime. I was 36 years old. I believe at the time uh, in Michigan where I was uh, living, the, the statute was 26. I was also in New York, and the, yeah. the, 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 the 26 was as old as I could be. I couldn't have fathomed uh, uh, of even dealing with that until much later, to be honest with you. So that was one thing. Yeah. Second thing are the, the various rinks that, uh, at, or, and, and figure skating clubs that I was uh, a member of and participated in. My, my coach, I, I learned later, had traveled, had a move from club to club to club because uh, allegations surfaced about his uh, treatment of his athletes. But none of them shared with other rinks. They did. Oh, they did. They did share with other rinks. They shared, they shared the rumors okay. that they heard. But uh, difficult to, to, to prosecute somebody on rumors, I guess. Uh, so that so everybody uh, was uh, knew about it. For example, when when uh, when Richard moved to the Detroit the, the Detroit Skating Club, a former student of mine told me that she was told by the uh, officials there that he wasn't allowed inside the men's locker room. Okay. That uh, uh, but but he still was hired. Let me, I, I don't, I don't want to interrupt any of you, but we have limited time, so I'm just wondering if Ms. Farrell and then Ms. Weaver and Andrew, you can take a stab each at this. Yeah, so in terms of who, yeah. I would say it really goes back to the men that are listed in the, um, the report that was given out. Um, they knew about it. There was the same thing with uh, the man that repeatedly molested me. He was known to be this person, but there was actually a report. Okay. And it was swept under the rug. Um, and the, the culture that has to change, it's, um, it's the idea that we are so brave to be here is a, it solidifies what the problem is. That is what shows like how hard it is. Right. And then you're expecting a kid to come forward and say things that they do not know the words that exist right. for, right? Yep. So it's a culture, it's just a, a, a cultural issue and it's the idea that people are finally speaking up and even look at like Time Magazine, people are finally listen, speaking up. Like honestly, that's not true. We've been yelling and no one's been listening. Okay. So I would say the ears of all the adults out there. Thank you. Um, Ms. Weber. Yeah, 
So when I think about who's most accountable, obviously, as I said, USA Gymnastics, USOC, Michigan State. But if you look a little bit deeper than that, um, I think it all started when the Carolis, um, the who you know, yeah. brought USA Gymnastics to where it is now. When they came over from Romania, they brought a lot of those training styles over and um, a lot of the abusive training styles. And I think that USA Gymnastics started to see that it was winning medals and they were getting lots of money. And then as a result, I think that that training style kind of seeped into the personal coaches um, across the nation. Yeah. And, and now that's the, that's the normal way of coaching. And you can ask any elite gymnast, they know exactly which coaches across country are the most abusive, but people will still send their athletes there or their kids there because they know they want to be successful and that's their best chance of making the Olympic team. So that's what they've made us believe, that that's, that's the only way you're going you're gonna to win medals and be successful is... is um, by having coaches that will beat you to the ground like that. Um, so I think the, cu the cultural issues go, you know, start, they start with the Carolis and in, in that training style. Thank you. And with the chair's indulgence, could we hear briefly from Ms. Dancher too? Thank you. Uh, as far as the most accountable, I would obviously agree with uh, Jordan, since very similar to my experience. Um, and with regard to how people say this, that I'm so brave, and I, I appreciate what you say because I've, I've never felt brave. I felt like I was doing the right thing. Mm -hmm. And so here in Mr. Marizzi's testimony made me cry because that's one of the reasons why I came forward was to give, to tell people it's okay to speak up. Yeah. And the other thing is, I guess, uh, the cultural, Problems in gymnastics are, there's so many, as, as she said. Um, uh, Larry Nassar saw the coach's abuse, uh, you know, almost on a daily basis, and he didn't report their abuse, and vice versa. Um, so they protected each other. And, you know, I, I obviously wanted to come forward because I was sexually abused, and so I wanted to do the right thing, and I wanted to protect others. And it shouldn't take having to have the experience yeah. to do the right thing. Yeah. Um, I, cause I wonder if it, you know, if this would have happened to anyone that was running USAG, any one of their daughters or their sons or any of their kids, you know, would they, would have they react differently, you know? Look, thank you all very, very much. And, um, I look forward to reading and hearing some more of your testimony. Thank you again, uh, to the chair and ranking member for your courtesy. Senator Blumenthal.